Is Ubiquity's free support any good? How do you create a ticket? We're gonna be covering that in today's video. So I actually have an issue at my house that I'm troubleshooting, and so I thought I would share that experience with you guys, how I created the ticket, what they're asking for, why they're asking for it, and even just share some of the conversation that I had with the support engineer in order to try and resolve this issue so you guys can make an assessment of your own and know how to create a ticket. So let's go ahead and get started. Issues are gonna happen, guys. It's just part of this world. And I will say, especially when you have something like Ubiquity Network, where you have a lot of different devices playing a lot of different roles, um, it's really easy to, to create an issue for yourself. There's a lot of configuration on the back end. There's a lot of things that have to be plugged in a certain way. And so sometimes it's difficult to know whether or not you made a mistake or if the equipment is having a bad day. And I will say, troubleshooting faulty equipment is difficult no matter what. They don't just raise their hand and say, hey, I'm going bad, you should have me replaced. And so a lot of times it does require um, a network engineer or a support engineer to help you figure out what is going on. Did I do something wrong or is the equipment what the problem is? And so today we kind of have an example of that where I have an issue happening on my network. I don't really know why it's happening. I feel like I've done the, a certain level of troubleshooting and we're gonna dive into what my problem is. I'll, I'll actually show you kind of how I came to this conclusion. And then we're gonna go through the support process that I went through, talk through the chat. We're not here to rub their nose in anything. Um, it is level one free support. So, you know, some of the questions they ask is typical to a level one, like, I don't really know why you're asking me that, but you know, they have to do their job. And so I'm just gonna walk you through that process and just show you guys, um, you know, what that's all about. So the issue as I was experiencing was everything would be working fine. And then all of a sudden I get this weird latency. Whether I was on my cell phone or my laptop, it didn't matter. So multiple devices experiencing the same thing, uh, everything would work fine, and then all of a sudden it would just act like the internet wasn't there. Now my Wi-Fi would still be connected, I would still be on the network, but just nothing. Slowness, choppiness, page cannot be displayed, all sorts of things that I don't normally see on the network. And I have a pretty fast physically, physically connected network. I have a one gigabit to the internet, I have 2.5 gigabit connection to my router, and it's pretty much 10 gig below that from a backbone standpoint. I know we don't touch anywhere close to that, so I know I don't really have any bottleneck issues. And so it really kind of pointed me at this is either a device issue or a network issue. Now, when I investigate a little bit further, I noticed that whenever I would have this issue, the device I was using was always connected to this entryway U7 Pro XG XGS um, access point which is, a, is connected via 10 gig into the network. I mean, it shouldn't be behaving that way at all. And so that's kind of where I focused my, my attention first. You know, you rule out devices. Every once in a while, it, the device is the issue. You got to reboot something, it's acting up. But this, because it was multiple devices, felt like it was something network related. So when I clicked into this entryway, um, access point, you get some tools, you know, right away you can notice there's some, some TX retries, which you don't really like to see. You like to see the nice clean green bar. Now everything down here is showing an excellent experience, which is great, but yet it was just, that wasn't my experience. And so um, when I clicked through here, I went over to insights. And as I got over here, I noticed down here in the history that I would see offline, reconnected, offline, reconnected, reconnected. That should not be the case. These devices should not be connecting and reconnecting unless I'm doing the connecting and reconnecting. You see they're all happening at all weird hours, 10.05, 10 10.08, 10, 10 p.m. Here's a 4.52 a.m. I promise you I was not messing with the network at those times. And so it really kind of got me thinking that something is going on here and I don't think it's even wireless. I think it's something physical. So when we click into, we can go into our logs over here, we can kind of see what is going on. So basically, I, 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 you can filter by XGS if you want to, okay? And it'll show you just the logs for that. We can just leave it reset there. But ultimately down here under the event types, I went down to device online, offline and device reconnected and it showed me my logs. Now, obviously something was going on August 18th because all of them went offline, that was probably me. However, from September 12th to today, lots of offlines and reconnects, offlines and reconnects, and that is not normal behavior. I literally don't mess with disconnecting access points very often. 
And so this is why I reached out to support. I needed to know why this was happening. And that's kind of sort of the challenge of when you're trying to troubleshoot your network. You know what is happening, but you don't really know the why. And Ubiquity isn't going to say, I'm disconnecting because of A, B, and C. You got to take a deeper dive. And so that's where support came into it. And that's what we're going to be talking about next. How was that experience? So let's, let me show you the process I went through to open up a ticket and start deducing what is happening on my network. All right, so let's just go over how to create a ticket. Now that we kind of know we have a problem, let's go ahead and create a ticket here. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of what I went through to start the ticket, and then I will kind of move over to the screen recording that I did when the ticket and we were chatting with the agent. So setting up and opening a ticket is very, very easy. It's all tied to your Ubiquity account. So we're gonna click on a little icon over here and you can see down in the corner here, support. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. All right, and you can see the ticket I have already open today. That's what we're talking about today. Um, you can see previous tickets you have, anything that was CC'd, which is neat. You can get to all of your you know, backups and invoices and just really a nice little one-stop shop for all of your um, Ubiquity stuff. But we're gonna go ahead and click on live support. Now, Ubiquity has incorporated a chat AI bot, which I don't normally love, but this one was actually fairly helpful, at least tries to get you routed to the right place, but ultimately we're gonna get connected to an agent. So I'm just gonna kind of go through that process a little bit and then we'll pick up on my previous ticket. So I'm gonna say, you know, I have a device that keeps disconnecting. Okay, we'll see what the chat bot comes up with. So it's gonna do a little thinking here. And sometimes with these, the more specific you can be, the maybe less you get kind of ran around. But ultimately, we want to get connected to an agent here. Okay, would you like me to connect to, to a human agent for further assistance? Yes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and say yes. So then Ubiquity's bot here is going to basically try and connect me to a human, and it'll actually give me uh, a notification that says, hey, you're second in the queue, first in the queue, 25th in the queue, whatever. Uh, and that's what happened last time. So ultimately, it was a really good um, way to do this. Now, this is really neat. I love the fact that they did this. Um, they want to get you to the right type of person. So is the device that you're having trouble with part of wireless, part of routing and switching? Is it a unified protect device? This is really cool. So it actually allows them to route things per, uh, to the correct person. So I'm gonna say it's a wireless device and then it's gonna go out and it's gonna say, do you allow us to download your Unify support file for troubleshooting? I love this. This used to be a manual process where you had to go into your settings, download it, that, took about, that takes about five minutes. And then from there, you had to upload it to them for them to look at as part of the troubleshooting process. It was always too big to email. So then you had to kind of create a, uh, some kind of link either with OneDrive or Google Drive. It, it just was a thing. Uh, this basically just gives them permission to go ahead and download it for your site. And then they'll go ahead and be able to look at it. So I'm going to go ahead and give them permission. And then they're going to say, well, what site do you want to do this for? So I have a lot of different sites that I manage here, which I have all grayed out here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just choose mine. Um, and you can see it's the t &E UDM Pro. That is the router I want them to be able to pull the config from um, to be able to take a look at. And it says we have included this into this uh, ticket and you're in the queue to speak with a support engineer. And there is one person waiting in ahead of you in the queue. Now, this is where we're going to pick up our conversation. I'm going to close out of this one, and then we'll go pick up our conversation. Because, um, But I wanted you to see this. I think this is really good. They've come a long ways from how this used to be. All right, so let's move over to the conversation. For privacy reasons, I'm going to just go ahead and block out the text name. It's not relevant to anything we're talking about today. They did a pretty good job. It was This was a pretty typical um, Tier 1 support experience, and I'm going to kind of walk you through it if you guys care to follow along here. So... Ultimately, in the beginning, after you get through the hellos, um, they just want to make sure they understand the problem correctly. Now, guys, my advice here is always to be nice, but be 
you know, specific as to what's going on. Because sometimes they take stabs at things and the stabs aren't really in the right location. Uh, and so you got to kind of steer them back on course. And that's kind of what happened here. No fault to the tech. It just, again, they're just trying to understand the issue. So as you read through the deal, you might notice too that it says it seems the issue was previously resolved by checking our layer one cabling. Now, just to give you a little bit of background without going into a whole separate thing, when I first got these 10 gigabit rated XG and XGS access points, I was super excited. They were rated up to 10 gigabit. I was excited to plug them in thinking, you know, everything's gonna run faster and all this other stuff. However, after I plugged them in, I started having a weird issue where my network would come to a crashing halt. Literally nothing worked. I couldn't wirelessly connect to my console locally, nothing. So I thought I had a router issue, you know, fast forward a little bit found out that if I removed these two access points from my network and then readopted them, the issue would go away. Everything started working fine. Um, and I even took them out of my network for a while and went back to my standard U7 Pros going, okay, what is going on here? And everything worked fine. It was very specifically these two access points that were causing the issue. So when I opened a the ticket, they said there was some flapping and to check layer one. Now layer one is basically cabling, check your cabling which cabling can cause an issue, guys. So I did that, I did the recommendation, I re-ended my cables, I have Cat6 in the wall, so I wasn't really worried about the in-the-wall cabling. Hopefully there's no breaks or anything there. I tested the cables, but I did notice that on the rack side, the keystones that I used in my patch panel um, were Cat5e. I don't know how I grabbed them, but I just did. So Cat5e is not rated for 10 gigabit speeds. So I was like, well, that's got to be my issue. Swapped them out with Cat6 keystones, plugged everything back in, and really everything has run very, very clean for the remainder of the summer until this issue. So that's why she's calling that out. She said, hey, I see previously you had a ticket open and we resolved it by, um, you know, checking the layer one, checking the cabling. And so I said, yeah, I th or I thought it was. Then she kind of veers on me and goes, hey, can you send me some screenshots of you know, your wireless air view and what the wireless signal looks like. So as you'll see in the next screen, we kind of had to veer her back on course. All right, so in her mind, the issue is that clients are disconnecting. I'm having weird disconnect issues from a client level, even though I use the word devices. Now, when I create tickets, you guys can do this too. I don't know if it really matters, but I try to use the terminology that is in the system that Ubiquity recognizes. So, you know, when you go into the console, a device is considered a switch, an AP, a camera, a router. Those are devices. Endpoints like laptops, cell phones, Fire Sticks, Roku's, Apple TVs, whatever, are called clients in here. So I typically try to reference those things by name in the ticket, so at least we're trying to speak the same language. However, she doesn't know that at this point. We've, we've really just said a couple things to each other. So this is the part of the conversation where we're kind of correcting that and basically saying this is not a client issue. This is an AP device issue that is disconnecting itself from the network. Um, the clients disconnect too, but ultimately it's because this AP is doing this. And then I just kind of gave her a... Uh, a little bit of background of, yes, we fixed it in the in the past, that previous issue I was talking about, uh, and everything ran great until about a month ago, and then things started uh, kind of rearing their ugly head again. So again, we're just trying to get aligned, same terminology, get on the same path so the troubleshooting can continue. Now guys, please be patient with your technician during this process. They are just peeling back the layers, trying to figure out what it is that you mean. And remember, not everybody on this side of the computer is super technical, so they have to kind of sort out what's going on before they can figure things out. So it, there's a back and forth interaction that happens during that. So please be patient, be kind. They're just trying to do their job. And I think that this technician did a really good job of doing that. They did. They're just trying to peel back the layers and rule some things out. And luckily I've been, a, I have enough technical experience that I could kind of help steer them in the right direction, which ultimately when the conversation picks up, that's exactly what we did. We ruled out some things and then I steered them towards using that tech support file. So that was the file that at the beginning of opening up the ticket, it asked, do we have permission to pull this file? And we picked our site and I said, yes. Now I think this is a great piece because this is the ultimate debugging tool. However, you can't just go straight to it. It's a great big file with tons of data. But what this is, is basically a snapshot in time of your entire network, the network application itself, the hardware, 
the logs, everything. And so you can correlate what was going on in the router at the same time the issue was happening over here at the access point. You kind of get the whole picture, but you can't just go look at it. It's You gotta know where you're going, look at what point in time the issue happened, and then go look at some other things. And so that's why they don't always start there. And I, that's a smart move. Otherwise, they're just looking at this big file, not even really knowing what they're looking for when the issue could have been a Wi-Fi issue or a cell phone issue or whatever with the client. So um, ultimately, I steered them that direction. And while they were doing it, and this takes time, they were looking at it for a good 10 minutes or so, I got to thinking on my end, and I said, you know what? If I switch these two access points, we keep everything else the same, one of two things is gonna happen. Either the issue is gonna happen again, but on the other access point, or the issue is going to follow the access point to the new location. It's gotta be one of those things, right? The access point is what's disconnecting. And so by switching them, that will help paint this picture as to if the issue is staying with the location or moving with the AP. So I just basically say that to her and say, hey, here's my plan, this is what I'm gonna do. And she comes back and says, hey, look, I found some flapping, again, pointing towards layer one or cabling on that switch port uh, during these times. And so um, I think flapping, or I think switching the APs would ultimately be a good way to identify if it truly is a layer one issue. And that's where we left things. And so I've switched the APs and we're gonna just see what happens. All right, so let's summarize. What did I think of my overall technical experience that I had with my technician today via the live chat? Now, I am gonna step back and kind of answer this a little bit more big picture because I've reached out to him multiple times and I'm gonna take all of those interactions into account, but it's been very favorable. I, I really haven't had a bad experience with support. Now, yes, there is some back and forth and yes, they'll ask some questions that you seem like they're out of, come out of left field, like where is that coming from? but they're just doing their job. They're trying to peel back the layers and I think they do a really good job of that, especially considering this is free support. I, I haven't really felt the urge to run out and pay for support because it was so slow. I mean, this wasn't days, this was an hour of my life. That interaction took about an hour from start to finish and that includes waiting in the queue, the person reading the tech support file, the interactions back and forth. It really wasn't too bad. And so I really feel overall Ubiquity support has come a long, long way. Because the old days, I couldn't say the same thing. It could be days before you got a response um, from them. And, and I think people have reached out and shared that with them and they've listened and responded. I think their paid support is a really great idea. And I think there's uh, a lot of people out there who like to make sure they're at the top of the queue or maybe they run a business and you know it makes sense to be able to get quicker responses. But I think for the everyday typical user, you're gonna get really good support um, from them. And I'm very pleased to say that. Now, keep in mind, I'm also comparing this to bad support. We've all, we've all had bad support, right? Cable company, for example. Anybody who's called the cable company has had some form of interaction. It almost has you pulling your hair out going, what was that? Um, this is not like that. It was very pleasant, uh, very to the point. Yes, we had to kind of sort some things out, but ultimately the experience overall was really great. Um, I think the Ubiquity has done a really good job with improving themselves in this area. So good job, Ubiquity, um, and keep up the good work. All right, guys, so if any of you have reached out to support and care to share your story, please leave a comment down below letting us know, good or bad, we want to hear about it. Um, but it, I think it's good for the viewers to kind of know the direction that Ubiquity is heading. And for me, it's been mostly positive, but I encourage you guys to share your story as well. All right, that's going to wrap things up. Thank you guys for watching. Um, at least now, if you need to, you know how to create a ticket with Ubiquity to get help on your network. I just really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you guys down the road in a future video.